What is a secret that you will never tell anyone? About 20 years ago I worked for a big publisher. They were upgrading all their tech and just dumping it in a skip. I asked a security guy if I could take some stuff from the skip and he said to help myself as it was all going to get crushed anyway. During a night shift I filled up my car with a beige G3 Quadra Apple Max keyboards, mice and some 19 4 Max screens. Some of the Max had Cork Express and Photoshop on them. I cleaned them up and sold the lot. I made enough to buy a G4 Quicksilver of my own which I still have today. I didn't tell my co-workers, ex-wife, managers or anyone else. When I was 9, my dad and I were reading Reader's Digest and found a magazine subscription card for a free case of Depends Adult Diapers. So we wrote my uncle's name and address down and put it in the mailbox. He got it a couple weeks later and called everyone in the family to find out who it was. We knew my uncle was fuming. So we kept it to ourselves. To this day, everyone suspects that it was my other uncle. One Christmas I was 9 years old and knew that Santa wasn't real, but for my 7 year old brother the fantasy was very much alive and good. We shared a room and my brother woke up on Christmas morning and looked confused that Santa had not eaten the Kit Kat that had been left out. He went quiet and I could see that he was working the facts through in his head. When he wasn't looking I ate the Kit Kat and showed him the wrapper and claimed he imagined seeing the wrapper unopened. This was 26 years ago and I have not told him in case he works out Santa is not real. My first job in high school. I had been there for a couple years. Some new kid came in and told a bunch of lies to the owner about stuff I had done at work. I wasn't questioned just let go immediately. On the kid's next shift my best friend and I went and placed large nails up against all of his tires so when he drove forward they would go right into his tires. I hear he had to replace all four. That was 20 years ago and I still side eye when I see him around town. I used to work in a shopping center. One time as I was walking into the building I sneezed and totally shit myself. I was about 10 steps away from the shop so I had to think fast. I took a hard left turn and walked direct into a department store. I only had 5 on me so I beelined for the underpants section and got the cheapest pair I could find. I then had to go to the center toilets and sort everything out. It was a real mess. I text my boss and told them I was stuck in traffic, but in reality I was 100 meters away trying to salvage any shred of dignity I could for the next 20 minutes. I'm happy to say the mission was a success and that day is now the benchmark by which all other days are measured. Every day since has been infinitely better. As a teen I stayed the night at my best friend's house and slept in their guest room. I was woken about 2am to the sound of her older brother arriving home intoxicated from a party. He saw me in the guest room and leaned against the doorway to say hi. He then stumbled down the hallway to his bedroom but never turned the hallway light off. And it made it difficult for me to get back to sleep. So after about 10 to 15 minutes I got up and walked down the end of the hallway to the light switch. I turned it off and started walking back to my room when I briefly glanced into his bedroom as I walked past. His door was wide open and he was sitting at his computer with his back facing me. He was naked from the waist down, masturbating to what looked like transgender porn can't be certain. But it looked like someone in heavy makeup, long hair and with a penis. I must have made a noise because he swung around, saw me staring and said oh shit then I immediately and swiftly returned to bed and lay in the dark not able to get the image out of my mind. Five minutes later I heard him creeping down the hallway. I was like oh god. Here we go. He looked so sheepish and uncomfortable. He stood in the doorway and apologized for what I'd seen and begged me not to tell my friend. His little sister. I swore I'd never tell them and told him it's fine and to go back to bed. To this day they wonder why he hasn't got a girlfriend and they think perhaps he has a crush on me because he acts weird around me. When I was in elementary school, I once lost something, so I asked to go to the lost and found. In the lost and found room, which was a big storage closet, they also stored the cokes for the pop machines. I took one. Then, probably three, four times a week, I'd remember I lost something else and go steal another coke. I don't know how long I did this for, 
but I got a lot of free coke. Throw away because there's no chance of me ever saying this in person. As a kid I grew up in a small country community of 3000 people, where I went to school etc. I had a crush on a girl, who was 2 years older than me all the way through high school. And when I was 16 I found out she was my half sister as my dad had cheated on my mum. This only came out when she turned 18 and found out who her dad was. Prior to that no one knew and my dad and her mum had kept it a secret for 18 years. Completely ducked with me for quite a while that I'd had a crush on my half sister for a number of years. Probably 15 years ago my sister had a gerbil, and one day I decided to bring it out of her cage and surprise her in the living room with it. Somehow I slipped on carpet and the gerbil went flying headfirst into the wall. It basically sounded like I threw a golf ball at the wall and the gerbil wasn't moving. Naturally I put it back in its cage and removed myself from the vicinity. To my amazement the damn thing was still alive and moving around a few minutes later and lived another two years without anyone ever knowing that I basically coped it into the wall at full speed. My dad was single and a couple of my friends moms was always bringing us food. My dad would say they were just being nice cause he was a single guy raising three kids by himself. My aunt picked me up from school sick and we head home. She must have known what was up and had me wait in the car. Both of my friends moms came out half dressed and shit with my aunt yelling at my dad. I never did tell out of fear. One mom was divorced but one wasn't and I was afraid of tearing their family apart. We'll take it to my grave. Two days in a row when I was in the second grade I pissed my pants. Because the teacher had this policy where she wouldn't let any student go to the bathroom even during free time in class. The third time I spent a solid 10 minutes begging her before she finally said fine. I pissed my pants on the way to the bathroom. My family only knows of the one time, but I had to deal with that humiliation two times before and it was within the first week at school. After that I had a water bottle that I pissed in during her class for the remainder of the year. I don't know what she was expecting if somebody who just moved in with zero friends would be doing in the bathroom. But honestly if I would have the opportunity to go back in time I would rather tell my own self to piss on her desk because that would have been less humiliating than pissing my pants three days in a row. This is not that good. I spend most Saturdays with my grandma and we would watch the same VHS of Moonstruck every week. I never told her how much I hated that movie it's a good movie but not when you're 8. We would watch it and then after we would eat ice cream and put on SNL. Opera Man era. I would give anything to watch Moonstruck again with my grandma. When I was about 8 or 9 the girl next door who was about 1, 2 years older than me would always take me upstairs to teach me about sex education. She once convinced me to be naked with her in bed. Obviously nothing happened because we're young. And I wasn't old enough to understand or have feelings of that nature. But she was lying on top of me. I remember thinking it was weird. I remember she would regularly wave to me from her bedroom window whilst I was in my bedroom. She's be on her windowsill naked. I was oblivious. Not told anyone about it. It was a bit of a case of one of those events that just pass kids by. I used to play house with the girl next door and part of the game involved going to bed together naked. We kept a sheet in between us for birth control purposes because we were like 9 or 10 years old and knew literally nothing about sex. Neither one of us knew where the parts went or how they fit together. But she had once heard a story about a 9 year old girl getting pregnant. So she insisted we be safe. When I was 14 or 15. I would listen to music and just imagine I was a character in one of the shows I would watch. Like Teen Titans. Totally spies or god forgive me Hamtero. The day I tried to listen to music and imagine like this stupid crossover between them and jump around my room. My brother had actually heard my jumping around from previous days and hid in my closet he observed all the stupid shit I did and mixture of shows combined because I would whisper quips from the characters. Instantly reacted by trying to choke him as soon as he revealed himself but he just laughed his ass off the entire time. Only he and I ever knew and I've been embarrassed by it ever since it happened. Developed paranoia of being watched. But I'm actually thankful for that now. I finally got that off my chest. Woo. It no longer has any power over. Me. When I was 8 years old we had pet mice. 
This one mouse got pregnant, and she was starting to eat some of her babies. This upset me so much. I rushed to tell my stepfather. I was so distraught and mad at the mama mouse. Why was she eating her young? What a bad mom. My stepfather's reaction. He made me kill the mom. Literally. He put her in a sink full of water and literally dragged me in there. Grabbed my hand. And forced me to hold this mouse underwater. I was struggling and crying the whole time. To take my hand away. This ducking traumatized me. And what's worse. He then took the rest of the baby mice that had lived. And he fed them to this duck and fish he had. I'm not sure I remember the name. I think he called it an Oscar fish. But maybe that was his name for it. I was so young. He was a very abusive deranged guy. My mom finally left after he beat her within an inch of her life. I've never told anyone that story. I'm too ashamed. I know I was a kid and I'm clear that he forced me. But it still doesn't take the pain and shame away. Edit oh my god. I sincerely did not even think this was something that would be seen. I'm not sure what to say, but thank you all for the replies. I'm trying to read each one, but I can't promise a response. I got kids of my own and read it is my guilty pleasure. Mostly when they are asleep. LOL I really have never told anyone this story, and I was scared. Self-conscious of sharing it here. I only did, because I figured it would be buried at the bottom. Thank you guys for all the support and understanding. It really just, my heart is so full from the overwhelming compassion. I don't even have words. He was a very messed up sick individual. But my mom didn't go back when she left my grandmother actually ended up getting custody of my brother and died shortly after they separated. And life did get much safer and better. And yes, I'm currently seeing and have been seeing a therapist finally. I'm working through a lot of my past traumas. Honestly though, I haven't even shared this with her. Trying to process a whole childhood of trauma takes time and this just wasn't even on the list of worse events. It really is something I've never talked about. Because for a long time, I felt like the guilty one, the bad person. My therapist has said that I take on a rescue role in a lot of my relationships and it probably stems from this. I wish to god I could have been the rescue to my mice. Thanks again kind strangers. Sincerely. During my freshman year in high school I was drinking a red Gatorade at lunch. This girl said that I was sitting in her seat. I hurried and swiped my drink to find another seat. I didn't realize my Gatorade lid wasn't tightened and the drink basically splashed all over her white pants. I scurried off pretending I basically just didn't duck up this girl's pants with red Gatorade. A few weeks later my friend invited me over to play some league at his house. His sister came home, and I realized that was the girl I spilled my drink on. On god I was shitting my pants at that very moment. But luckily she seemed to have not remembered my face, because she did not mention it. My friend and I still talk to this day I've graduated high school 9 years ago, and I have never told this to him or his sister. I sometimes feel like she pretends to not remember, and is actually plotting something all these years. I didn't know my best friend's name for almost 10 years. She goes by Katie almost exclusively and got it in my head early on that it was short for Catelyn. Imagine my surprise when I heard her being referred to as Catherine at our convocation. No right way to bring that one up in a conversation. I ended up telling this story to my mother 15 years later but it kind of counts. This happened when I was 6. When I was a little kid my paternal grandmother had two dogs Tessa a little glitzy Maltese and Bindi a Rhodesian Ridgeback. Tessa was too stupid to even realize being mean was an option. So we always played with her when we visited my grandmother. But Bindi was always locked away in half of the house when asked about her my mother would bristle and say Bindi doesn't like kids my mother had her reasons to be very fearful of dogs like Bindi as she had to put down her first dogs when I was born because they were seriously aggressive towards me, like launch themselves at the window if they saw me aggressive. The house operated under an airlock system for the first year and a half of my life always two doors between me and the dogs. After a while my grandmother moved into the house directly behind ours and we put a gate between our shared fence. Suddenly Bindi was accessible. We kept a respectful and fearful distance from her. For the most part. One day I was in my garden playing with my very patient Labrador Katie we were playing circus. This dog was amazing. 
There wasn't a single thing you could do to him to make him mad except be a horse. He hated horses. Bindi wandered into the yard and was watching us so in a burst of foolishness I ran towards her to try and involve her in the game. She panicked and bit me. Not hard. I didn't bleed or anything. I had some indents on my arm from her teeth and it did bruise a little but even now I'm always covered in bruises. I panicked and cried and sulked in my cubby house until I calmed down enough to go inside. I knew I couldn't tell my mother because I would get in so much trouble for playing with Bundy. The next day I was in the garden with Katie and Bindi was there also, but I ignored her. I studiously ignored her for weeks. She'd come up, and I'd walk away. Then some switch flicked. She was my adoring dog now. Everywhere I went she followed after me, and oted after me. We'd curl up on the sofa together, and I couldn't go a single step without her at my side. I think she must have felt so guilty about that bite. She was my sweet dog and we were best friends for 4 more years until she passed. My parents always remarked on this miraculous change in attitude from Bundy. How an old ornery dog who hated everyone was suddenly an oversized lap dog. Even years after she passed they'd marvel about it. I didn't tell my mother until I was well into my 20s that the reason Bindi liked me was because she bit me. When I was about 7 years old my dad took me to Blockbuster and I really had to pee. Blockbuster didn't have a restroom, so I peed in one of the aisles. I'm pretty sure the cameras saw me, but thankfully there was no one near me. Wow thank you all so much. I didn't think this comment would blow up like it did. Also I corrected the aisles lol. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing for more videos.